I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Dong and Rope and Trigger Happy Havoc. We are about to start the last Clash trial. I have no idea how much longer this game is. The only thing I know about this game is that Taka and Mondo were my bros, bros. 50,000 likes, and I'll release the next episode if I don't complete it right now. We're about to get into this episode right now. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. Oh, hey, hero. <laughs> oh, Makoto. Why'd you act so surprised? Uh, oh, um, no reason. You heard Monokuma's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? I... I... I just did, actually. I'm on my way out. You already talked to him? What'd he say? Listen, sorry, but I... I gotta go! Hero, wait! There was no point in trying to stop him. He ran off like a frightened animal. Hero? It was like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? He ran away like a scared animal, like a frightened chihuahua. He was like, yari, yari, yari. Sorry, guys. I like making that animal noise. I don't know why. Yari, yari, yari. Is this Makoto? It's Makoto, bro? And Monokuma. Makono, Makono, Mok Monokuma. That's what I meant to say. And Makoto. I am Monokuma. Hello, welcome, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope. Yeah, this big-ass white one right here. Can't you see, Makoto? This must be the envelope. Hey, grab it, dude. Woohoo! And just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Don't worry. Just get on with it. Okay. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope. And opened it. What I found was a single photograph. Oh no, my bros, bro, and everybody else. It featured a bunch of faces I recognized extremely well. It was everyone who'd come to Hope Speak at the same time as me. Wait, but there's someone behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognize. Wait, that's not true. I do recognize her. That's right. When Biakuya and I were in the headmaster's room and we looked at that file. Makuro Ikusaba. Yeah, the girl that I found out yesterday that had the same exact measurements as Junko. Then this girl is... What? Why? Why is Makuro here with everyone else? And even more than that... Just having everyone here pose like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all wearing matching uniforms. I don't remember anything like this. Where's Makoto at? I don't see him. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. Yeah, I was just wondering, where is Makoto? I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. I just realized Junko was behind somebody's arm. I think it was my bro Taka. But I guess that makes sense. So wait, was I wrong? Was Makuro? Wait, hold on. I need to see that picture one more time. After all, I don't remember ever taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else was when I arrived here at Hope's Peak Academy. So it's natural for me not to be in this picture, but what's definitely unnatural... Yeah, Junko is right there by Taka's beefy buff arm. So wait, who is that girl then? Who is Makuro? Is it Makoto? Is that everyone else is in the picture? I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other until they got here. But if this picture is real... Then could that mean, man, that picture is as real as my mom's tits. Could it be everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... <laughs> How long are you going to keep up this rambling soliloquy of yours, Hamlet? What are you doing? You're kind of do? getting in the way standing there, you know. Hmm. So, I mean, get out! But I told you I'm not fielding any questions. I'm what kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. I guess that means he's done talking. Damn it! Group photo has been added to the. We got him, boys! Ba 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 ba! I had to. I had to. I just had to. You guys know I had to. So in the end, all I found in the gym was disappointment. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. Okay, so now I'm confused because I thought Mukuro Ikosaba was Junko. But Makuro is her own grown-ass person, and Junko was her own self behind Taka. 
How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? Why did Hiro run away so fast though? That's what I'm wondering. But it looks so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? Maybe it's a deep fake. Which would mean everyone but me. I've seen deep fakes of me. You guys have sent me some deep fakes of me on Twitter. Yo, that's disturbing. You guys disturb me. Maybe I should just ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear all this up. All right, let's go, man. The music kicked in. I'm hyped. You're hyped. Oh, yeah, baby. So this is where you've been hiding. Listen, I was hoping to talk to you. Oh. Makoto? Sorry, gotta go. What? She ran off so fast, I didn't even have time to ask her to stop. Hina, why? Why won't you talk to me? Yo, why is nobody talking to me? Do I offend? Do I stink? I swear I bathed. I swear I watched these stank ass nuts. Where else is everybody? Why is everybody running from me? You know what? Who's not gonna run from me? Kyoko. Kyoko won't run from Makoto. Because they're buds. They're best buds. Hero, why did you run from me earlier? Hey, Hero. <laughs> ah, Makoto. What's going on with you? Every time I see you, you freak out like that. Uh, no, uh, I... Uh, no. Sorry, but I'm in a big hurry. Once again, he ran off like a terrified rabbit. Hero, what's wrong? I still wasn't able to talk to him about the notebook I'd found. It was like he was avoiding me. Like he was afraid of me. Why? Yeah, what is it that they saw in the gym? Because I saw an envelope that didn't feature your boy Makoto. I wonder what they've seen. They've obviously seen some shit because they are scared. Is anybody here? Nobody is here. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first thing I saw when I got there <gasps> was her passed out again. Oh, I thought she was dead. Huh? Toko. Hey, Toko, wake up. Oh, somebody opened the thing. Toko, are you okay? No, no. She's not dead, is she? Check the pulse. Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! It's cold. It's super cold. It's so cold, I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. I see. What? I was asleep? Ah, I must have fainted again. I bet you were standing there staring at me getting all excited, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Straight up horny? Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill with the horny talk. Um, okay, so... Why did you pass out? I don't know. Last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What'd you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right. Your memory stops and starts each time you switch. <laughs> Bingo bazinga! We share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. You and don't you say it like it's a bad thing. It's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because <laughs> even if she forgets something, I totally remember. Yes. So it's like double the memory. Uh, no, it's more like half. Genocide Jack's memory has been added to the pew pew! Pew 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 pew! But all I want to know right now is, where's my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat. I don't know. I'm sure Biakui is around somewhere doing his own investigating. Mm, yes, By himself? Yes. I assume so. I knew oh, it. I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. <laughs> anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he must be right now. <laughs> you know what? She does the kiahahas better than me. Tucko shot off, her eerie laughter echoing behind her. Ah, I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point asking Genocide Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Tucko faint? There's gotta be some reason for it. Yeah, it's definitely not this big ass body that's right here in the freezer, Makoto. Fridge, it's open. But I'm sure they were all shut tight last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Hey, Kyoko. She faints so easily. Kyoko. Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologize. Listen. But listen, about this room. Oh yeah, it's... It seem... It's a morgue. Yeah. I knew. I suspected as much. And Toko must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and, well, there you have it. You knew she'd fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assume she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why has everything got to be so difficult with her? Anyway, anyway, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Makoto. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched. But suddenly, she stopped. What's wrong? 
listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Makuro's body is here. Okay. Makuro's corpse? Makuro's body is inside the fridge? I see. Just like every other time, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because they assume we wouldn't be doing the class trial over again, I guess. So... You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right. Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Makoto. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm gonna find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So dumb. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there? That's it? Okay, well, guess I'm just gonna wait over here. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monokuma made earlier. <sighs> you mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because... The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us, to cloud our judgment. I can solve this mystery on my own without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind forge that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it. There's no other explanation. So, besides that, can I talk to you about something else? Okay. Well, if she's gonna investigate the body, what am I supposed to do? On the left side of the fridge, a bunch of blue lights are on. But these ones aren't. It would, seem... it would seem the blue light comes on when a slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around, the number of lights that are on, including Makuro's, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights. Biolab lights has been added to the scratatatatatata. Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone can do good work if they go slow. In that spirit, I'll make my report brief. So, did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my findings. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, the victim's identity is unknown. They were, however, dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife, which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the file says they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Huh? Because... All the Monokuma file says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Wrong. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they give. Listen. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However... But that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds, it makes it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying they are? Well, we all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with it. So then... But what if Makuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very Certainly least. you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other they ways. envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then, as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. <laughs> of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular mystery, you should keep it in mind for the future. Kyoko's account has been added to the- That's nunchucks. Hey. So, if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, I'd like to. Earlier, when I was looking at Makuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get all that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo. There's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is, without a doubt, Makuro Ikusaba. Makuro Ikusaba's profile has been added to the shing, 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 shing. Those are little knives being and? thrown by a samurai. Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. So then. Then it looks like we have no further business with Makuro's body. Let's get going. It's kind of chilly in here. 
Oh wait, are we not gonna put the body back? Don't you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad. Did you forget? She was our enemy once. A part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed. She's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well, yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be naive? She helped her put the body back? So I think we've all done what we can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on! I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook I found in that locker. Yes. If I don't do it now. Alright, do it now then! If you're gonna do it, then do it, Makoto! Put your big boy pants on! I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then, out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? What? So... What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the dorms? Indeed. I do, yes. But to get into any of those lockers, you'd need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook, and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because it has your name in it, Kyoko. Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in a locker? That's a good point. Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there was something written inside. It was about the headmaster, about your faja. What? If that's Could true. that mean that video is real too? Video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. Although, I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. What are you talking about? I... I need to go investigate those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the Headmaster's Handbook. That way you can... So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker. Makoto. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD. And it says, Class Number 78, Urgent Interviews. So... I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway... I don't have time to explain exactly what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realize exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now. But I guess that means there's some important clue on this DVD. Interview DVD has been added to the boom, 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 boom. And now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words... So as it turns out, the arrangements I'd made didn't stick. What I mean is, I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answer to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life, and all because of the mastermind. However... But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the mastermind. This is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. <laughs> it's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it? Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. There's just no understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it. But her smile was filled with sorrow. Whew. So, that's it for my rambling. That's it? I mean, if somebody's... What the hell just happened? Whoa, everything disappeared. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There is only ever one absolute truth. Whether that truth serves justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not. Because... Because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then... Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko was gone. I better get going myself. I got that DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the AV room to check it out. Kyoko says something about hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. 
even if it's the worst truth in the world. I can't afford to lose. The only worst truth out there is that Mondo got turned into Mondo Butter. That is the worst thing ever. But let's go check out what's on that DVD. Wait, actually, before we do anything, let's talk to Biakuya because he is in the library right now. So let's ask him some questions. Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Where's the library again? Right here. Because he wouldn't run away from me, like Hiro and Hina. He would never do that. That's out of character if he ends up doing that. Wait, there's a letter right here. Maybe this letter was part of Monokuma's setup too. Maybe he wanted us to find it and then he acted all upset and crazy. I'm sure anyone watching the broadcast would just eat that kind of drama up. Oh, is he inside the archive? Bro, he better not be with Toko. They better not be doing some nasty stuff. I've seen how long Genocide Jack's tongue is. There he is. Oh, Biakuya. Listen, do you think we could talk? Biakuya? That's enough. I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Biakuya, wait! But of course he didn't. He just walked away. What the? Why was he acting like that? Like he was purposely trying to avoid me. You know, it's funny, guys. I know you don't like it when I say the name Biakuya. But I do it because I like saying it. And I know it upsets people. So Biakuya, Biakuya, Biakuya. This should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well then, I'd better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. Yay, I get to drink my drink. It said that it was playing, but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared into the black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds, but to me it felt like an eternity. And then, all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I hadn't seen Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay then, are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I do apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. That's probably Kyoko's dad, right? I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. Well, get good then, bro. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Saika's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Okay. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. I'd be like, hell no. Can you accept that? Uh, um... You want me to accept that? Saika was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spending the rest of your life in this school? I accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. What's the point of going to school forever? Isn't school supposed to prepare you for the real world? Like educate you in certain things that you might want to pursue as a career in the future? What is the point of being in a school if all you do is learn and you never apply it to your careers in the future? That doesn't make any sense. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up until now. But this? Only this? I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard. Because I know how much Saika wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams with her friends again. She wanted that so bad, she tried to frame me for murder. So, why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Koto? Are you mad, bro? Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Koto looking like he got attitude, hot attitude. Yes. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation, but I, the I in the here and now, had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less sitting down to talk to him like this. Now, shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. I said yes? I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean... We don't have much of a choice, do we? 
but I promise that as long as you're in this school, I'm trying to figure out why this is happening. Thing I can to protect you, as the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Are they living in this school right now as an out-of-body experience, and the Makoto we're seeing in this video is the real them? I don't know. I'm so confused. Once again, the video cut out. From there, the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Mihikuya. Toko. Don't show my bro, bro. Okay. Hina. Everyone. They all said that they agreed to live in this school. Forever. And then... Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She'd sat down with the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, her Faja. And when he asked her his question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went black. Huh? It wasn't just a monitor. The DVD player itself had apparently turned off, which of course meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Oopsie! Looks like it broke! Out of service! What? It just so happened to break just now? Too bad. Now, then, when, doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? Son of a bitch. Failure my ass, you cut the power on purpose. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He'd ask the same question and they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself. I let out a huge, exasperated sigh, but as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. That's what I was mentioning, right? Like they're having an out-of-body experience? Like their actual bodies are somewhere else right now and they're just spiritually in this school? I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but I kind of feel like there's two realities that are happening right now at the same time. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed to obviously work in favor of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten? Or... Interview DVD has been added to the... I just made shit up. Ding dong bang bong, baby! Can't forget about my ding dongs, baby. Can't forget about my bing bongs, baby. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Is it class trial time? Although that dawn is totally pitch black, there is no storm that won't eventually end. Okay, Shakespeare, get on with it. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is the promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Anyway, let's get started. The beginning of the end of the class trial. Let's do it. I'm hyped up for this one. Once again at you know where. Come on, let's freaking go. Let's go. Let's do this. So what I'm thinking, guys, is that maybe this is a Matrix scenario, if you guys have ever seen that movie. It's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay, then. This is the end. Yeah, like I said, maybe this is a Matrix scenario where their bodies are somewhere else, but only in their minds are they actually in this school. So let's start the class trial and let's whoop some ass. I guess I'm the first one this time. Makoto. You're early, Makoto. Listen. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. But well, where's everyone else? Why aren't they here yet? However. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said, there's everybody. Iakuya! Iakuya? Fine. Damn, what the hell did I do? They arrived. One after another. But they were all in the same state of shock. Hina? Yo, why has everybody got attitude, bro? 
Like, relax. Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence. It was the deafening silence of fear and suspicion. It was like first class trial. You called for me. <laughs> ah, I'm late. Ah, I'm strong, like silent fire. master. So wonderful. So cool. So hot. My loins are ablaze. Yes. Now listen, everything will be just fine if you leave it to me. My With my scissors, master. sharp scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge and shiv the master of evil. But I thought you couldn't kill anyone but adorable little boys. <laughs> if it's what Master wants, it can be boy, girl, or anything in between. I can handle it. <laughs> Where am I? <sighs> no human language can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Is everyone here? Oh, and wearing our gloomy Gus faces, I see. Okay, well then, let's begin! This final class trial is gonna be slathered in pitch black despair! Climb maximum sorrow! That's fine. You're right, this is the final class trial. And this time, it'll be fair. What do you mean, this time? Stop with all the slander! I'm a bear in good standing, you know? If there was a Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest, I take home the tiara every year! I'm gonna win this game super fair and square! Today, and I'll make sure I'm everyone watching white. at home knows that despair is mightier than the hope. Stop talking. Dendo. Enough of your tedious dribble. Begin the trial already. <laughs> sure, sure. Let's begin the trial already. I'll be waiting for you down below. You so don't try and run away. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing as loud as ever, Monokuma disappeared. Huh. <laughs> Whatever. In the name this of will be family. over in no time. With an inexplicable confidence, Biakuya was the first into the elevator. One by one, the others followed. Don't give me that attitude! You too! <laughs> Bitch boy! Nobody made eye contact, nobody said a word, they just disappeared into the elevator. Hey. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. However. Well, you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. However. Well, you can tell us all about it soon. At the class trial. You're right, I'm ready. So... Ready to win, right? Of course. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. You know what? I think they think that Makoto's the mastermind because he wasn't in the photo. I started making my way toward the opening. Step after step toward that gaping maw. I'd resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated to myself that there was no fear. No mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down. Calmed my trembling body. And finally, on steady legs... This is the last time we're going to be in the elevator? I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. Without warning, it began to descend. Deeper and deeper. 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 Deeper still. That's what she said. Deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper. Deeper. Boy? Deeper. Uh, you need to stop. Let's do with this deeper and deeper. De loca. Deeper and deeper. I closed my eyes and sight fell away. All sound too disappeared. Alone in the universe, I waited for those elevator doors to open for the last time. What could have been seconds or centuries later? I felt the gentle vibration of the elevator come to an end. I slowly opened my eyes. This is the final trial site? What do you think? Isn't it just the perfect background for deciding a person's fate? Yeah! It's the long-awaited last stage! The always exciting final boss battle! And I'm gonna sit in on this one. I'll just sit right here in the vacant 16th seat. Kills, well then, kills, let's kills. begin! I say it better, Monokuma. Everybody knows that. Okay, we're gonna save this. And maybe I'll get through the whole trial. I might do half. But either way, we about to get started. Okay, let me fix my hair for this last Since trial. This will be the final Can't be seen your whoopering right now. I've come up with a special rule. Of course you did. Course so you listen did. up. Let me fix this hair. I'm trying to listen, you but then you can figure out Mukuro's killer and go on to solve the mystery of this school. You guys win! Sweet. But if you can't... We die? Then I win! And of course, waiting for the loser is the super exciting, super heart-pounding punishment! Are you saying that if you lose, you'll execute yourself? Yep. Sure will. Cap. And that's final. No loopholes. No wiggling out of it later. How's he gonna kill himself? Of course not. Bears never go back on their word. Never mind all that. I just have one question for you. What's that? Oh, you're taking this serious, huh? 
Are you feeling okay? Is the mastermind only one person? Hmm? Don't bother. I already know the answer. Why is he talking with like a big buff deep voice now? You're all the mastermind, aren't you? You're all out to get me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Those are fighting words. I'm right, aren't I? I knew it. Okay. We're jumping right in. All right. I'm going to make my argument. I'm going to make it loud and clear. Group photo, places to check, headmaster's e-handbook. All right. Bet. Let's go, guys. One take Jay's in the building. You guys have all been working together, haven't you? you bitching and bitching and bitching. I have evidence, so I know I'm right. Okay. Hey, you stole my line. You're all out to get me. I'm sure of it. Right. I have evidence of my own. Okay, what am I going to shoot what my bullets at? Incidents. I, too, have evidence to present. Evidence that proves everyone other than me has been working together. Sure. What? Wait, so hold on. Right. This doesn't make any sense. How can the three of us each have that kind of evidence? Group photo. Yeah! Let's go! I'm that dude! You guys know what I do? It's not just you three. One day, Jay's I have building. evidence too. Woo! What? You two? Yo, I'm a killer. I'm a convicted the killer. The you're all referring to is this group photo, right? Right. Well, well, yeah. Huh? Wait, but mine's different. Oh, so Monokuma was trying to trick everybody. Look at the See? You have. That's what it is. I'm in it. But that can't be right. Because in my picture. In her picture, she's gone. Watch. See? I'm the only one not in it. Ah. I figured as much. In which case... Hiro, you have a picture too, right? Let's see it. Okay, but be careful with it. It's pretty important evidence. Alright, let's see. This one too. It's just like I thought. Okay, you know what I just realized, guys? I realized that Junko in every single picture, she's turned around or her face isn't showing. Why is that? Like, I'm very suspicious of her ever since the last episode. And Genocide Jack need to chill with that freaking tongue, though. And Mondo got a mullet? Mullet Mondo, bro. So the secret in these pictures has been revealed. Secret or whatever, I don't care. You guys are all in on this together. That's why I'm the only one missing. But you're in my picture. You're the ones trying to trick me. We all have different pictures. So the whole purpose behind these photos was to get us questioning and fighting with each other. That's pretty messed up. What about fair trial? The mastermind laid a trap to make us each think everyone else was working against us. Huh? I laid a trap? A trap? How rude! What grounds do you have for such audacious accusations? The proof I need to reveal Monokuma's trap. Each photo has a certain something in common. There's a connection regarding what person isn't shown in the group photos. And that person is the one who got the photo. Dude! <laughs> Why was Toko case, one of the options? The only one not in the picture is the person who received it. I love the options. Like, one of them is always so, completely ridiculous. in the picture I got, I'm the only one missing. In the picture Hina got, She's the only one missing. Yeah, look, Junko's face is turned around. And then she's turned around again. Like, the what is she looking at? He's the only one missing. As long as we're talking about it, I suppose I should show you my photo as well. Yeah, let's see it. All right, let's see. Damn, it's a big ass fish. Wait, In other I words, didn't get a good look. Gave each of us a I was analyzing it. That fish caught that my eye. Wasn't included. Man, stupid fish and catching my eye. saw our picture, we just assumed everyone else was the enemy? <laughs> Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I thought that must be it. But how was that a hint? But you know, there might be more to this than just Monokuma trying to confuse us. There's something else that bothers me about everyone's pictures. What is it? What's digging at me? Listen, can I see everyone's group photo one more time? It's not directly connected to what we're talking about, but I'd like to double check something. Sure, no problem. Yeah, I don't mind. I'm sure there's something unusual about these group photos. 
What is it? I need to compare each of them one more time. The Aquitius picture. Okay, let's see. Yeah, her face is covered again. Splash with the water. How convenient. Hina's picture. She, uh, okay. That's an unflattering picture of Makoto bitching and crying about running on the track, but okay. Hero's picture. And mine. There's something strange about all of them. Something I can't quite pin down. Something. Group photo has been added to the scrap. Did you just forget about the photo already? Ugh. Trying to trick me with such an obviously fake photo. Is that the thing that Makoto's thinking though? That. The thing that I pointed out? And on top of that, Bro, I should be the ultimate investigator. Like, Kyoko, give me that like title. Give me that dress. title. It belongs to me. Mm -hmm. So you think they're fake? No, no, no. I assure you, they're quite real. But what are you talking about? There's no way. Yeah. I don't remember ever taking a picture like that, so it's gotta be a fake. I'm sure of it. But you know, can we really be so sure? Huh? Don't get me wrong, I don't remember taking this picture either. But is that really enough to be absolutely positive they're fake? What do you mean? The reason I don't remember this picture isn't necessarily because it's fake. There might be some other reason. Some terrible reason. An unbelievable but entirely horrifying reason. Mm, hey man's Gambit. I think I've grown to like all these little mini games. What is this? Amnesia. Okay. So M as in, mm, I'm gonna figure this one out real quick. Give me that. E as in E C S I A. Hey, I can't think of any more of those letter things. I'm sorry, guys. Now I understand. I applaud that cat. Let's say that somehow, we'd all lost our memories. That could explain it, couldn't it? Highly unlikely, but yeah. Oh, I get it. So we all just lost our memories at the same time and forgot about the photo. Makes sense. Yeah. As if, you expect me to believe such an unbelievable occult-type story? Uh-huh. Yeah, we all lost our memories? That's just crazy. It's only natural that they wouldn't believe it. But no matter how much they refuse, if that's the absolute truth, they have no choice. We can't move forward until they accept it. And there's another way to prove it besides those pictures. Yeah, the DVD, right? Because every single person said that they'd agreed to stay in the school for the rest of their lives. Interview DVD has got to be the bullet. So let me lock that in place. Let me ch ch that. And I'm pretty sure I won't take Jake this. I'm on one right now. Like, my brain is just on. Like, it's like a light switch. Watch me. Watch me work, guys. Watch me work. Ever since I got to this school, I remember everything that's happened. Oh, yeah? Do you remember this? Let's go! I'm that dude! Yo! I'm the dong and Those photos master. aren't the only things that point to the possibility of memory loss. I amaze myself. This DVD does the same thing. You're not going to show us something indecent, are you? No, it's nothing like that. It's a video of all of us being interviewed by the Hoax Peak Academy headmaster. When you say all of us, you mean... I mean all of us. Including you. You lie! I never get any kind of interview. No, it's not a lie. Just watch the DVD and you'll see for yourself. The headmaster did, in fact, interview you. What are you saying? I didn't imagine you would remember. It's not about whether or not I remember. You expect me to believe all this? That I... I lost my memory somehow? Well, we don't have any way to refute it, so we have no choice but to accept it as reality. How can you say that? We're talking about living, breathing amnesia here! To be honest, I have something else on my mind right now. Something else? You said the DVD contains recordings of us being interviewed by the Headmaster, right? What were the interviews about? The Headmaster sat each of us down, one at a time. 
and asked us the same question. He asked us if we could accept the idea of spending the rest of our lives in this school. What kind of question is that? And how did we answer? We'd say no, obviously. Actually, we all said we could. Even me, I heard myself say yes. I could spend the rest of my life at this school. Why? Why would you say yes to something like that? That's the that? part that I'm confused about. I don't I'm know. trying to figure it out. I don't out remember a thing. The same goes for everyone else. Nobody remembers. You don't remember choosing to live here forever, or even talking to the headmaster about it at all. It doesn't matter if I remember or not. Even if I bought the whole amnesia thing, the idea that I would want to live here forever? Seriously. That's just insane! How can I believe that? Insane or not, we can't move forward until you accept it. Am I right? You sure are, cause it's all true! What? <laughs> what? I know it sounds absurd, but if it's the truth, there's nothing we can do about it. Indeed. We only have one path in front of us. Then... really? Yep. You all totally lost your memory at the same time! Bullshit. This is all... Making my Because they all hurt. gave the same exact answer. And this isn't like some normal kind of memory loss. You stole those specific memories from us, didn't you? Oopsie! You figured that part out too, huh? Of course. There's no way we would all just happen to get amnesia at the same time. How could someone just steal our memories? How? Come, come, come. That hardly matters right now. If I said it was hypnotism, would you believe me? Or we opened up your skulls and messed with your brains? Would you really believe anything I said? How it happened doesn't matter right now. What matters is figuring out what memories you took from us. That's what you're trying to say, right? <laughs> I knew I could count on you! The interview with the headmaster, taking that group photo, those can't be the only memories we lost. There must have been a purpose to it all. A reason for taking away our memories. Of course there was a purpose. It all has to do with the original motive. The original motive? You mean the motive you came up with? To try and get us to all kill each other? That has something to do with the memories you stole from us? <laughs> it sure does. But that part's still a secret. Anyway, I'm sure it's not easy, but let's all focus on the class trial for the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, so you want us to figure out who killed her before we do anything else. So until we do that, well either way, we have to explain every last remaining mystery. So, the one who killed Makuro, the true mastermind, that's what we need to expose. And we're gonna figure that out. We just need to keep inching closer towards it. Make your argument, but so many new secrets keep coming out. Monokuma control room, Makuro Ikusawa's profile, Headmaster's e-handbook. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be so Makuro Ikusawa's profile. Unless I gotta switch the bullet from one of their statements. Whoever did it is the same one who's behind everything. Okay. That much I'm sure of. But when you think about it, is the Mastermind really here in the school? Of course! They have to be here somewhere. What makes you so sure? Um... What does make me so sure? Hmm. Exactly! You're just making stuff up! There's no way the Mastermind is here! The Mastermind is probably a million miles away! No... Because Masterminds always lurk off in the... You know what? I think I gotta debunk her statement. I'm positive they're somewhere in the school. Otherwise, there's no way they could have controlled that machine. Yeah. So who did it? Hold on. Who killed her? Monokuma control room. Whoever did it is the same one who's behind And everything. then, I don't know which statement I that gotta put sure. it at. Toko statement? When you think the one that they're a million miles away? Or do I do it at Hina's statement? Of course! Let me see. They have to be here somewhere. Right here? Nope! Okay. So maybe Toko's statement. Maybe it's Toko's statement. My bad, everybody. Let me so fast forward. Let's fast forward and get this started. Because I think that's what it is. I was thinking that's what it was, but I was like, you know what? Let me just try to make sure. Nope. Right here. Give me that. Yes! No. Okay. Gang, I could have one take J that. 
Damn. You know what? I'm still happy about it, though. We're in the zone. We're in the There's bone no zone. There's no question that the mastermind is somewhere within the school. How do you know? Did you find some evidence or something? In the back of the data center, I found a panel that controls Monokuma. The mastermind must have been using that to control it all this time. So there can't be any doubt. The mastermind has been inside the school all along. There can't be any doubt. In which case, there also can be no doubt that the mastermind is one of us. What? Why? Recall what Makoto told us Monokuma said to him earlier. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants, all of them high school students. And the only one to take a single step in host peak since the killing game began... ...are those 16 students. So if the mastermind is in the school, we have to assume it can only be that 16th student. Right. But how'd they manage to survive all of this? So we're the only ones here? It's not me! I'm not the mastermind! Well, it's not me! I blame Makoto! Why? What? Why me? Cuz! It's super weird how you're the only one who survived being executed! Oh, I get it! The only way he could have survived is if he was actually the mastermind himself, right? But then why would they have another class trial if Makoto is here now? Aw, nuts! You got me! Wait! What are you trying to say? Everyone, calm down. There's no reason to panic. The Mastermind's true identity will become clear soon enough. Just as soon as we find out who killed Mukuro. That's a good point. Rather than wasting time bickering, we should put our minds to work solving this mystery. Exactly. Yeah, well, how much time have we already spent talking about the murder? He's right. What more is there to talk about? If you want something to talk about, I think there might be one thing. We haven't fully established what Mukuro's fatal injury was. Huh? But I thought we figured that out. She died when she got hit in the back of the head. No, that isn't actually what killed her. It was something entirely different. Wouldn't you agree, Makoto? Makuro's actual cause of death must have been the other wounds, blow to the head, the stab wound. The other wounds. I got it! All of the wounds covering her body. That's what really killed her. Hey, now hold on a second. You did read the Monokuma file, right? The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. It made it pretty clear. Those wounds were made at least a few days ago. So they can't possibly be what killed her. Consider this. What if the murder itself took place at least a few days ago? What? What if, when we discovered her body, she'd already been dead for several days? If that's true, then naturally the wounds that killed her would appear to be however many days old. Okay, so that makes sense if Makuro is Junko because Junko died early in the game. And then maybe Monokuma just put that body out there to frame Kyoko when the body was already dead for at least a few days. That doesn't make any sense. Because Makuro is Junko. Because... Because she had all those wounds before she ever came here. Huh? How do you know that? Isn't it obvious? She was the ultimate soldier, right? So that means... You know... You're wrong. <laughs> she denied me. <laughs> <laughs> he has a crush on Kyoko, huh? I can't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Calm down. Come on. I mean, you think I'm not weird, okay? At least listen to what I have to say before you deny me! Alright, so go calm down! If you're so sure we're gonna deny you, why bother saying it in the first place? Alright, let's figure this one out. So far, I've only got one wrong, and that's because I was a little too hesitant on that one. Group photo, interview, DVD, Makuro's profile, headmaster's handbook, Monokuma control room. Okay, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this right out. Yeah. She must have been a hundred different battles. Sure. So, when you think about it, obviously, she got all those wounds in battle. No. Are you finished? You didn't deny me this time. Okay, so I gotta shoot a bullet at that statement. You made me go all cutesy. But I need to figure out what Don't bullet worry. I'm gonna use. There wasn't anything cute okay, about Okay, what bullet am I gonna use? 
No, those wounds didn't come from the battlefield. One look at what was written about her, and that should become clear. Mukuro was the okay. ultimate soldier. Got it. I know what to do. We're gonna slow it down at that statement that was twirling all about right here and blah blah. Hey, 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 calm that down. I guess I ran out of slow motion point. Let me get ready, guys. Let me get ready for this. Right here. Gee, what? Stop! Shoot it! Oh my goodness, that is pissing me right off. Come on, I know that's the thing. I know that's the thing that we gotta do. If it's not, I am gonna be the ultimate dumbass. We got this, Jay. Come on. Right here, baby. Right here, baby. Right here, baby. Give me some! Yes! Woo! Spinning shit though? No. That was annoying. Mukuro didn't suffer those wounds in battle. The file we found in the headmaster's room said as much. Despite the time she spent in battle after battle as a member of Fenrir, when she entered this school, she hadn't sustained a single injury. Don't be denied so completely. <laughs> Toko is an interesting person. <laughs> Maybe it's because of all of Master's training. Anyway, so we can be sure that Mukuro suffered all those wounds after coming to this school. In which case, they could be the very thing that killed him. As a matter of fact, it's hard to imagine any other possibility. When examining her body, I found that her stomach and head wounds came after she was already dead. Unless anyone has any better suggestions, I think we can say this with confidence. The wounds Mukuro sustained all over her body are what ultimately killed her. Mukuro's fatal injury has been added to the... But if that's what killed her, then does that mean she's really been dead for who knows how long? That's exactly what it means. When we found her body in the garden, she'd already been dead for several days. So then, what about the little matter Wait, how long have they been last there? night? Because didn't Junko die the very first day? Yeah, Makoto, That's true. you said you were attacked in that? your room by a masked assailant. If Mukuro had already been dead for several huh, days, certainly it couldn't have been her. Interesting. So who was it that attacked you? The identity of the one who attacked me. I can't think of anyone else. The mastermind. I got it. The one who attacked me was the true mastermind. When we discovered Mukuro in the garden wearing the same mask, I naturally assumed she must have been the one who attacked me. But I was wrong. It wasn't her at all. It was the mastermind. Huh. <laughs> I'm getting so confused right now. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting a little impatient sitting here listening. I think I'm gonna jump in. Let's start off with a nice, easy question. Your assumption that I attacked Makoto is just that, right? An assumption. You can't really know who was under that mask, can you? I mean, that's the whole point of a mask. The true identity of the masked attacker is Mukuro Ikusaba. At least, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that might convince me otherwise? Do we? No, there's no way Makuro is the one that attacked me. Even if I didn't see their face. How do you know? Makuro had a very obvious Fenrir tattoo. Comparing that to the masked attacker, that's true. But then there was a hand that was grabbing them. How could you know if there was a tattoo or not? I don't know. Ugh. Okay, let's try to figure this out, guys. Like, I keep getting confused, but maybe that's the point of Monokuma saying that. I'm pretty sure this isn't the bullet that we gotta use. Probably gotta get a new one. You never saw their face, right? Uh-uh. So you can't have any idea who was under that mask. I'm telling you now, it was Mukuro Ikusaka. Okay, we gotta shoot something at this. You're wrong. Even without seeing their face, And I gotta get a bullet from somewhere else. I feel it in my bones. We can use to prove it wasn't her. Oh? And what is this other part? Is it the right hand? Or yeah. the left hand? Right hand. Maybe the right foot. Right hand. Or perhaps the left foot. Right hand, right hand. Or could it be the hips? The hips? Her most noticeable feature, the tattoo that marked her membership in Fenrir. That tattoo was in an easy to spot area. 
Okay, yeah, the right hand. So I just gotta shoot this bullet over there. So let me fast forward this a little bit. Right here. Mmm! Bingo! Luke Rowe had a up tattoo that ass. on her right hand, if I remember correctly. A representation of Fenrir. In other words, a wolf tattoo. Mm -hmm. But I saw the right hand of the person who attacked me. Oh, yeah, that's true. And there was no such tattoo. Uh. So there's no way the person behind the mask was Mukuro. You right. Yeah, well, okay. You got me. I guess it wasn't her. But that still doesn't prove that it was me. It could have been, you know, someone else, right? Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I all have solid alibis for that entire night. Yeah, we were in the gym tearing you apart, so it could have been any of us. Oh, okay, sure. It couldn't have been any of you. But what about Kyoko? It totally could have been her. Okay, here we go. Oh, no snappy comeback. Did I score a bullseye? If you insist, I don't mind showing you. Huh? Show me what? What do you think? I'll show you the one thing that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it wasn't me. Her hands? Before anyone could say anything. She's gonna take off her gloves, right? Yep. Kyoko was removing her gloves. Your hands! Without thinking, I let out a gasp. It was more than just a little burnt skin. Awful, isn't it? It happened when I was first learning to be a detective. I was inexperienced. I thought you didn't want anyone to see those scars. If it means we get another step closer to unmasking the mastermind, it doesn't really bother me. Kyoko seemed to savor the words as she said them. Then she put her gloves back on. Can we see? Just one time? My scars should suffice as proof. That's true. Makoto, did the person who attacked you have scars like mine? No, not at all. I'm positive. Then this much has been made clear. There can be no doubt that the one who attacked Makoto is the true mastermind. <laughs> this is just awful! On top of my secret being revealed, I had to look at those positively grotesque scars of yours! Aw, uh, that's so messed sorry. up! Sorry, did I say that out loud? I do hope I didn't hurt your feelings. Not at all. You can say whatever you want. Sure, as long as it means pushing me farther into the corner, right? But I'm not cornered just yet! Because if you haven't noticed, the circumstances surrounding Mukuro's death are totally unknown. That's true. All we know right now is she was killed a good while before this morning. On the contrary, we don't know anything other than that. You're not going to tell us she was already dead before we arrived here or something, are you? <laughs> In that regard, you have nothing to worry about. I promise you, without a doubt, she died after our little killing game began here. Then somehow, she was killed in secret without any of us knowing. And after she died, who knows how much time went by before we found her, right? Did the culprit stash her somewhere? She couldn't have been in the garden the whole time, could she? If she was, she would have been totally decomposed. Just like your brain! Ouch. Then, she was Ouch. being stored somewhere? Ouch, but Toko burns. To hide a body here. To just store it somewhere? The morgue. There's only one place. I can't think of anywhere else the body could have been. The bio lab. Oh Give me some, man. Mukuro's Bro, what's body going on? Probably kept if this was a test, I'd get an A with three pluses. Bio lab? You mean on the fifth floor? Like, I'm making a face like something stinks, but I'm just amazed at myself. Like, ugh. That's right. You know, like, It's ugh. actually set up for use as a morgue. So it's the perfect place to hide a body. And it'd keep the body preserved at the same time. Mm-hmm. Then you're also saying the body was moved from the bio lab to the garden. And yeah. I have no doubt that that's exactly what happened. In fact, I have proof. The tarp. The proof that shows the body was carried from the bio lab to the garden. The something that made its way from the bio lab to the garden. It's the tarp, baby! Give me some! 
What makes me so sure the body was carried from the up. bio lab to the garden is I'm just too good. The tarp that we found in the garden. When I was checking it over again, I noticed something. I noticed that some text had been stamped on one corner of the tarp. Oh, it says Biolab. Holy cow! How'd you notice that tiny little thing? <laughs> that's what she said. Makoto's nitpicky nature seems to have. Well, actually, that's what the friend said timing. to the girl that saw. Never mind. This proves that the tarp originally came from the Biolab. In fact, there's a whole stack of tarps just like it in there. So when the killer moved the body to the garden, they must have grabbed a tarp to wrap it in. Then they simply left it as it was to protect against the sprinklers, and put the code on it afterwards. You made everything sound so amazingly consistent. <laughs> That's just a wild guess! Where's your evidence? Prove that the body was wrapped in a tarp and moved! There is no evidence. I was simply explaining what I think happened. But you seem to be getting pretty worked up about it, wouldn't you say? Worked up? Now that the conversation has turned to the topic of the bio lab, you must be getting pretty nervous. Because the key to uncovering your secret identity is hidden within that room, isn't it? Yeah, we're getting closer. Are you talking about unmasking the mastermind? We're getting closer, boys and girls. You see, the bio lab contained an inconsistency. One so major it can't be overlooked. An inconsistency in the bio lab. Could you be talking about? La, la, la. I can't hear you. La, 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 la. Oh yeah, we're getting to the truth. We're getting closer to the truth. Oh well, just ignore him. Hmm. I need to pull myself together and think. The inconsistency in the bio lab. Could you be talking hey, about? By the way, Makoto, what Wait, about what? that one thing? What one thing? What inconsistency in the bio lab? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm talking about? Your family. What? <laughs> Don't tell me you forgot about that video message. Oh yeah, and then everything's destroyed. So, so what do I didn't you even think? like my family anyway. Are you sure your family's still okay? Why are you bringing that up now? Seriously. Your mom, your dad, your little sister. What do you think has happened to your family? Are they really as safe as you might have assumed? Stop talking about that. Calm down, Makoto. He wants you to get upset. Yeah, I need to calm down. I can't let him get to me. He's just saying that because he knows we're getting closer to the truth of the bio lab. So if I want to shut him up, I need to expose the inconsistency and slam him with it. The inconsistency has to be that one area where the numbers just don't match up. Wait, what? Okay, I'm kind of confused. The moment of truth. Okay, this one's easy. All we gotta do is a little bit of this. And a little bit of that. And a little bit of that. Oh, okay. Reload. Yeah, tempo up, tempo up. Give me some, give me some. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. What? One, what two, three, want? four, five. Yeah. Give me that. Sure Give me that. This? Oh, damn. This is going crazy. All right. Go crazy. Go crazy. Go stupid. Go stupid. Go stupid. Go stupid. Sure yeah. This? Yeah. Oh. 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 Bitch. Woo. Oh, God. Reload. 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 Two, three, Are four. Sure Ooh. This? Yo. One take, Jay. In this freaking building. What? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, shoot. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Stop. Prove it. Mother. Wait, I got it? Yes! I didn't know that was it. It looked like it didn't connect, right? The consistency Kyoko's talking about is... The lights. <laughs> the lights, boss. The lights. What, what are you talking about? Uh, what about the lights? Like I said before, the bio lab also acts as a morgue. And as part of that, a giant refrigerator was installed in there. Nothing like we wouldn't That's know. where everyone who's died is stored. Nothing like we didn't know. And it was set up so that when a slot had a body in it, a blue light would turn on. In other words, if the blue light is on, that means there's a body in that slot. But I counted up the number of blue lights that were on including the one Mukuro was in, and there were only nine. Why does that matter? You 
gotta give me the bite-sized version here, man. Nine lights doesn't make sense. The number of lights that should be on is... Uh, six? No? Okay, uh... Is it five? Shoot! Hold on. My bad, my bad. Is it five? It's gotta be five. Five's not even one of the answer! Eight? Oh my god! Bro, this is embarrassing. Bro, this is the saddest thing ever. Sorry, everybody. It's ten. Come on, I was just playing. I was joking. Ten of the lights should have been on. Any other number is incredibly suspicious. Suspicious? Why? That's simple. Just recall who's oh. died here so far. You know what? The here. reason why I said six is because that's how many class trials there are. That's right. That's the key to solving this mystery. But I forgot two extra people died. Well, that would have only been eight. You know what? Forget what I just said. Yeah, Chihiro was fourth. <laughs> my bro, my bro was fifth. <laughs> and my other bro was sixth. And uh, she could have died a slow death. I wouldn't care. Sakura, she was cool. She was cool. And victim number ten was Mukuro. Hmm. So ten people in all? That's right. Any other number should make you immediately suspicious. Yeah. But according to the lights in the bio lab, only nine people were being stored there. They should have opened You're every single door and see whose face was there. I got it. The mastermind destroyed one of the bodies to get rid of evidence. But if they wanted to do that, they would have destroyed Mukuro's body since they actually killed him. And yet, her body was left alone. Then, whose body disappeared? It may very well be that none of them disappear. And if that's true, then why doesn't the body count match? Including Monokuma's execution, there have apparently been ten deaths, but there were only nine bodies. That's the point I'm trying to make. I'm completely lost. How can the number of victims be less than the number of murders? The reason there are less bodies than murders. The explanation for more murders than victims. Why is that? What would it take for that to make sense? The same person was killed twice. Only nine murders took place. The mastermind destroyed a body. Only nine murders took place? Damn it! What? Okay, hold on. Wait. Let me see the choices again. The same person was killed twice. Maybe that's what it is. The same person was killed twice. Okay. The same person was killed twice. That makes sense, I guess. Killed twice? Officially, ten murders have been committed so far. But one of the victims may have been murdered. And then murdered again. That shit don't make no sense. Murdered and... Murdered again? <laughs> it's like you murder a dead body again. Alright. that's right. the case, there could have been ten killings, but still only nine victims, right? Right. Technically, you're right, I guess. Still... Something like that could easily have happened. No, it is what happened. Sounds like you're already convinced. Then can you tell us who was killed twice? It was Mukuro, of course. Before she was killed as Mukuro Ikusaba, she was killed as someone else. Yeah, she was killed as Junko. And that's why the body had to be stored in the bio Because Junko is Mukuro Ikusaba. So Junko died in the beginning, and then she was killed again as Mukuro. No, 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 that's crazy talk. She was killed as someone else? Come on! Besides, who could that someone else even have been? All you have to do is look at those bodily injuries of hers, and that will become obvious. Nothing's gonna become obvious, because Kyoko's totally delusional! No? Okay. Let's figure this one out. I've been on a roll right now. A's and B's on a roll. Monokuma file number five, so I know damn well that's not gonna be the bullet. But we're gonna figure out which one we gotta chick chick Who into is our slot. Someone else that Mukuro was killed at. Was it Sayaka Maizono? No. Junko Enoshima? Yep. Right here. Leon Get that. Uwaka? Chihiro Fujisaki? Uh-uh. Mando Owada? Okay, we know who it is. Kiyotaka Junko is Ishimaru. locked in the slot. Kifumi Yamada? Can we go back? Celestia Actually, I, I kind of want to grab the purple thing. I want to grab the purple shits. Or I'm a fan of the purple shits. Sakura Ogami? 
No, Definitely not no, stop no. There's no way anyone right here. Murdered. Give me that. Give me that. No, that's wrong. Stop that. Monokuma, stop with the cap. Stop it. Wasn't her fatal injury pretty similar to Mukuro's? Bro, I'm done with the games. What do you mean? I'm slobbering because I'm so done with the games. Well, remember what happened to her? She was impaled by a bunch of spears all over her body. And Mukuro died from a number of wounds across her body. When you compare that to the stab wounds Junko suffered... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, and those are the only fatal injuries that match up. That explains why those two bodies are actually one in the same. Oh, uh, yeah! So let me see if I have this straight. Junko, or someone going by that name, was stabbed to death with multiple spears. Yeah. Then her body was kept in the bio lab for however long before being dragged out again. Only this time, it was presented as the corpse of one Mukuro Ikusaba. It all matches up, right? Those wounds Junko suffered could easily be the same injury. So that means Monokuma killed Mukuro. It's really true? Because Mukuro, Mukuro aka Junko, Junko, died from Monokuma's little spear wait, that so impaled their body. What does it all mean? It means that there haven't been ten victims, but nine. Which also means that among the people we thought were dead, one is still alive. And that's the true identity of the mastermind? Who is it? Who's behind all this? We already know the answer to that. It's Mukuro. She's still alive. But then whose body is that if it is Mukuro? She took Yugo's body and made it look like she was the one who died. Oh. So Mukuro is still alive. She's gotta be. Wait, I thought that Junko was Mukuro. A little silence? Then I must be right. I'm right, aren't I? Mukuro? Alive? The one that's still alive is Mukuro? But can we really believe that? There's no way. There's no way Mukuro Ikusaba is still alive. Okay, so it's either Mukuro is alive or Junko is alive. Makuro's fatal injury, Monokuma file, number five, Makuro Ikusaba's profile. Okay. The body we found in the garden. It wasn't Mukuro. Okay. Then she's still alive? What is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? That's right. Makuro Ikusaba's like profile? Is that what it is? The body was her. So the mastermind's true identity is Mukuro. What do you say, Monokuma? Do you give up? Oh man, I don't know the answer to this mm. one. Now. That's definitely not it, huh? That's not it. For that to be true, then that couldn't have been her body we found in the garden. Is that really possible? Right here? Damn. Okay. Whoops. I'm confused about this one. This is the one I don't get, but I only have two hearts. Is it at this? Nope. Okay, I don't know. Please tell me this is it. Yes! No, that's wrong. Oh, I only had one heart left. I only had one heart left. Oh. No. The body we I'm found so in the garden was Mukuro. That's one thing we can be sure of. The body's appearance and measurements are consistent with her records. Right, Kyoko? She was 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 97 pounds. Her vitals were 31, 21, 32. But weren't Junko's measurements the same exact thing? Everything in her profile is consistent with that corpse. And then there's the matter of the Fenrir tattoo. So there's no question it's her. But if Mukuro's not the mastermind, then who's actually still alive? Someone made it look like they died, but they're actually still alive. There's only one person it could be. Select someone. We know who it is. We know who it is. Where are you? There you are. Come here, give me that. Junko is still alive. What? It's the only possibility. Woo! Are you sure about that? Huh? Let's freaking go! I admit, since Mukuro is undoubtedly dead, Junko does seem to be the only other explanation. It was all acting. But we saw her get him They were all paid actors. She died right before Those poles were paid eyes. actors. I know they were. 
Junko were still alive, the death we saw would had to have been some kind of charade. Of course. But you yourself confirmed she was dead, did you not? Now that you mention it... I gently placed my hand on Junko's lifeless body. I touched her wrist to check for a pulse like they do in movies and stuff, but... She really is dead. There wasn't anything else to say, she was gone. I did check, absolutely, and I can say for sure... She was dead. There's no question. Junko was dead. So... The idea that she's still huh. alive... It must be... wrong. Then you're withdrawing your previous statement? <laughs> I know you gave it your best shot, but too bad. I guess your conclusion was a dud. Yeah. <laughs> too bad, too bad. Maybe Makoto didn't know how to check for a pulse? This case hasn't been decided just yet. Oh? You haven't given up already, have you, Makoto? Huh? No, of course not. There's no way I'd give up that easy. That's all well and good, but how do you intend to solve the problem standing in your way? Junko absolutely died. Mukuro absolutely died. Then both of them are dead, right? There can't be any kind of survivor story. I think we need to look at this from the opposite direction. What does that mean? Huh? The opposite direction? Let's assume Junko is still alive. If so, how could she have survived? I'm telling you, those poles that impaled her, paid actors. How could Junko have survived? I checked her. She was dead, I'm sure of it. But still, if she were alive somehow, could it be that Junko's not the one that died? It wasn't Junko, but someone else entirely? Maybe she used some sort of trick. How though? What? What do you mean trick? What am I going to spell out? It's a long ass word. What? What does that mean? Is it replace? It is, it is, it is, it is. L as in I take none. A as in A, man, I'm about to figure this out. E as in everything's gonna be okay because I just figured this. And D as in this is gonna be good. This is gonna be now real I understand. good. Let's go, replaced. But how though? That looks exactly That's like Junko. What if she switched places with someone else? Switched places? That's right. Before the spears could kill her, she got someone to take her place. That don't make no sense. Specifically, Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay, that kind of makes sense because they're the exact same measurements and everything. And that would make it Mukuro's corpse that showed up later. But what I don't get is how do they switch that fast? Which is why the body's height and weight and everything match Mukuro's profile, right? Yeah. I don't know anything about this switching places thing, but... That had to be Junko who got stabbed to death, right? Yeah, you're saying they switched? When could they even have done that? Yeah. Right when she was uh, about to die? Like she used some kind of ninja replacement technique? She was right there the whole time. Good point. There's just no way they could have switched like that. Huh. So maybe the whole idea is wrong. There has to be some way. I need to figure out how to explain how they could have switched. They switched at the moment of death. They switched after death. They switched at the beginning. They switched at the moment of death? Damn, man! I failed! Bro, I failed! Did they switch at the beginning? I got it. Okay. The two oh. of them. That don't make no sense. They switched places from the very beginning. What? From the beginning? Why would Makuro even agree to that? That's my thing. Yes. From the moment we first met, if that's when they switch. That don't make no sense. Then they wouldn't have had to switch at the moment of death, right? But why would Makuro even agree to switch and become Junko? You After know what I mean, guys? The one we saw at that point would have already been Mukuro. It's kind of like you're just like, what? Like, huh? Get? Hold on. Por qué? So you're saying the Junko we first met was actually Mukuro all along? We'd already met her? I had, like, a normal conversation with her. When we first met, none of us knew who anyone else was. That's true. 
So Mukuro could have simply told us her name was Junko. And nobody and would have yeah. known the difference. Nobody would have known. That would easily allow the two of them to switch places from the very beginning. Wait, but Mukuro had a tattoo on the back of her hand, right? Junko never had any tattoo like that, did she? Mm -hmm. Make up? She could have hidden it with foundation or yeah. something like that. If she did, it likely melted away in the explosion, exposing the tattoo after the body was extinguished. Plus, there were the fake nails found on the hands of Mukuro's body. They were the same fake red nails she was wearing when we all met for the first time. Yep. But if she really did use foundation... Correct. Even if there was no tattoo on her hand, I couldn't say for certain it wasn't Mukuro. So I'm glad nobody noticed that glaring hole when we were trying to figure out who attacked Makoto. But too bad for you, Monokuma. You can't deny it anymore. Wait, so... this whole thing was a setup from the very beginning? If that's true, it was quite an elaborate plan to be sure. Making it look like Mukuro was Junko. The reason such an elaborate plan was possible is because the two of them were working together. So Mukuro, the ultimate despair, teamed up with someone like her. In other words, it would be fair to say that Junko herself was also the ultimate despair. Yeah. What's wrong? Wait, how Lost can there be the two ultimates? I think he's just afraid. Afraid? What's that mean, afraid? Fear is only possible where hope is possible. I only have despair, so fear is an alien concept to me. Then why haven't you been saying anything? Because it's a bunch of nonsense. Junko's my secret identity. <laughs> As if. Then why did you try and protect Junko's real identity? I tried to protect her identity? When did I do that? So he still refuses to admit it, but... He can try to deceive us all he wants, it doesn't matter. Because I've already figured it out. He tried to hide Junko's identity, and not just once, but twice. The first time was during our latest investigation. Okay, so it's gotta be the photos, right? Come on, what? It's not? Okay, it's not the photos. Damn, what is it? Let me see. The Kuro's Fatal Injury, the interview DVD? Right? I got yes! Well, I was in the AV room, watching the DVD of our interviews with the headmaster. I actually didn't even know what that one was, I was guessing. It wasn't just a monitor, the DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which of course meant that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Oopsie, looks like it broke, out of service! What, it just so happened to break just now? Now, then, when, doesn't matter. Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. That's what failure is, right? You made sure I couldn't finish watching the video. And the reason you did that is because you didn't want me to see the real Junko, did you? Oh, yeah. If everyone was in that video, of course Junko would have had to show up. Let's see and it. If Makoto show us. saw the real Junko, it would have been totally obvious that the Junko we met was an imposter. The that whole power outage thing was just a fluke. No, it wasn't a fluke. The mastermind definitely orchestrated that power outage. And that's not the only time they tried to hide Junko's identity. The mastermind tried to cover up one other piece of evidence, and I've got to reveal that. It's the group photo, right? Because Junko's always turned around. The moment of truth. Okay, so we just gotta do these pow pows. Alright. Pow! Oh, let me reload. And hit that. Plow. It's gonna be easy. Ooh, 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 ooh. I actually like this one now. I did it before. But hey, when you got smooth moves, when you got smooth moves, you got nothing to lose! Come on. Give me that. Give me that. Yeah, yeah. Pow! Okay. Boom. Ooh, on a roll. On a roll. On a roll. Oh, damn, it's getting fast. Ah! Got it. Oh, shit. Oh, shitty twisters. Come on. Bow. Got it, got it, got it. Give me that, give me that, give me that. Hit that, hit that, quit that. Bow. Final strike. Give me 
me that shit, That's boy. impossible! Give me that shit, boy. Give me that! What? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Group photo, group photo, group photo. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it! Yeah, no! Damn it! My bad. Oh, it pisses me off. Got it. Okay. Group photo this time. That's impossible! Can I get it? Can I hit it? Yeah! Freaking go! I was just this late. This late. That's how late I was. Wasn't the only thing you tried to cover up. You did the same thing with this group photo. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. I noticed it just a little while ago, when we were all comparing the photos we got. In all the photos, there's a certain similarity, an unusual circumstance. Well, what's so unusual about them? The unusual circumstance common to all these pictures. Her face is covered up every single time. Bro, it's so obvious. It's obvio. The unusual circumstance is Junko's face. I got it. Come on, stop playing with me. Junko's stop playing face. with me. The one thing common to every single photo is that you can't see her face. Why though? That's my question. Why though? Oh, because it's we haven't seen the real Junko, her right? Face would just happen to be hidden in every single picture, don't you think? And on top of that, in this photo, you can see that Mukuro is clearly visible. So, in other words, at that point, the two of them hadn't switched yet. Can you stop With showing all that it? In mind, there's no doubt that the girl whose face is hidden here is the real Junko. So I wonder what she really looks like. Which is why you is she a hideous beast? That didn't show her face. Because if we could have seen her face, then it would have clearly revealed that the Junko in the pictures wasn't the Junko that we knew. That ain't my Junko. I believe everything Makoto said is true. Junko and Mukuro switched places before we met either of them. So she killed Mukuro, who had taken her place, making it look like she died. And the real Junko is still alive. And she's the one behind this whole murderous situation. This killing game. But why she's though? That's my thing. Why though? And the ultimate despair. Is it because she just wants despair? With this, the identity and the crimes of the mastermind have been exposed. No, no, wait! Hold on! Don't bother trying to deny it. There's no more room for debate. You don't have anywhere left to Bro, run. we just cooked Monokuma. Well done. Borderline burnt. Closing. <gasps> yes! My favorite! Okay, so this one is everybody's in the picture. And then... Junko is saying was good, right? Junko saying was good. So if Junko saying was good, then does that mean Makoto say was good back? You know what? I have no idea what this one is yet. Maybe it is this one right here. Maybe it is. Okay, so Junko is stomping on him, gets stabbed. Act three. This one is Morg. Yeah, Morgan Freeman. Is that what it is? Is that what we do? Or is it that one? Carrying the bull day. Maybe. Maybe it is. And then this one is the person taking out the knifey. And then... Uh, what are they going to do with that knife, though? Kyoko sees the masked person right there. And then that's what happens. Or... Yeah, it's like that. Or... It's like that. This one's tough, bro. That must be it. That must be it. And then... Oh my god, bro. This is ridiculous. Like, this is ridiculous. Take off the mask. Act 5. I think, um, the body is right here. And then they explode it a little bit. Then the mastermind burns the body. Like, that shit don't make no sense. Wait. You know what? Hold on. What the hell? There, explode the body like that. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got this wrong. I'm not even confident about this. I'm not even confident about most of these choices I made. But let's just see. Exactly what happened. Let's see what happens. We 
we met the ultimate fashionista, Junko and Oshima, right after we all arrived here. But that wasn't the real Junko. Yes! Okay, cool. The girl we saw before us was actually the 16th student who had taken Junko's place. And that girl's name was Mukuro Ikusawa. Please tell me I'm right. Dude, this looks so badass. But it wasn't long before she died at the hands of Monokuma. In other words, the mastermind, Junko and Oshima. Junko is the mastermind, okay. What? Damn it. No, I didn't lay out my reasoning right. I need to rearrange the events of the case. What? Okay, is that? The killer is That's gotta be it. You! I was thinking that might have been it. No, it's not it either. Okay, I only got one heart left, guys. Thing out right here. Here's Give me exactly that. What Stop happened, with me, boy? Stop playing with me, boy. Yeah. Her body was kept in a bio lab, which had been converted into a morgue until Junko decided to put her body to use. I only have one Junko more heart left. I think I'm gonna die. Out of the bio lab, using the tarp to carry her to the garden, she fabricated the murder to try and frame Kyoko. Who proven to be one big thorn in her side. Meanwhile, she wanted us all to think Mukuro was still alive and hiding somewhere inside the school. No! Damn it! That was my last heart. Damn, that sucks. Nobody believes me. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Alright, you know what, guys? Since I got that wrong... I know is you guys are going to really hate this, but I'm going to end this episode here because I'm assuming that the next episode is going to be the very last Danganronpa episode that we are going to do on this channel. So 50,000 likes and I'm going to do the last episode of Danganronpa. So make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. Whew, that made me out of breath. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.